I'm glad to be sitting. Today was leg day. My legs are back there shaking. I'm sure you all want lunch. Okay, let me just set the record straight. I'm Mike. This is Travis. We get confused a lot, but this is Travis Johnson. I just want to, I want to introduce him a little bit, right? So I've known you for, what, 15 years, I think. Travis Johnson, when I first met him, I want you to listen to these numbers, right? That's 2,648, that number, versus one. Okay, and so when I first met him, I was working for Larry H. Miller ad agency. I walk into his dealership, and he's there at Larry H. Miller used car supermarket. So he took used car supermarkets from one small, uh, well, one decent size uh, dealership up to six. It was pretty incredible. So I'm sitting there talking to him, and I remember the very first day, and the, the very first thing he said to me was, well, you look good. You know, and so little did I know, remember those numbers, little did I know that was going to be the ratio of fat jokes to compliments. And so it was one, <laughs> one compliment in 15 years, 2,648 fat jokes. Yes. <laughs> and we've done, they've worked really well. And thank you for so much material. <laughs> <laughs> Let me update that. <laughs> and the beauty behind this is I was, you know, flying here. We were in Nashville late last night and stuff. I'm reading the notes and, and everything, and I'm looking at these notes. I'm like, did Mike's son write these, these, <laughs> these questions? I mean, I'm just going to ad lib. <laughs> no, we, it's, it's a great partnership and a great friendship. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot here for two seconds. And, and, and uh, one... I have a new goal. It's to be called a keynote speaker, right? I want to, I want to be the keynote speaker, right? Um, and, and two, I would like to uh, plug Max Connect, as, as Ben did as well. But, um, you know, and I get emotional. I'm, I'm super easily. I'm an emotional guy. Uh, us car guys pretty much uh, all are. Um, you know, Kyle lived next door to me, and he started this company, he, he and um, their team, and and uh, upstairs in his, his little office. And he'd gone through a bike accident as well, broke his neck and all kinds of stuff, man. I thought the guy was going to die, but, um, you know, every night we'd walk together around the neighborhood. And I would just listen to how brilliant this guy is. And then um, I just noticed he's just different. He uh, is constantly doing something, constantly active, constantly moving, constantly thinking, um, constantly appreciating other people. And um, it was pretty easy to decide... Um, who you're going to go into business with because I consider everything a partnership. Everything that I do on a daily basis is with people and all of those are partnerships, however you look at it. Um, so I want to surround myself with people that are 10 times better than I'll ever be and far more brilliant, which all of you are. I'm probably arguably easily the dumbest guy in the room. But um, And so this company has taken um, the, the uh, used car supermarkets uh, through the ceiling and uh, Mike Anderson has just you know, I wrote you a note uh, last week after we had done some radio. We've been doing radio for so long, we can get in and out in 10 minutes, and he says one word, and I'll throw off it, and we'll go, and we'll have like 15 or 20 ads. And um, we, we hit numbers constantly, and, and um, it's, it's all due to, to uh, what he's brilliant at. And I think as an entrepreneur, um, you have to look at each individual and companies and everybody else. It's on a daily basis. We're getting hit by a million people, right? But you've got to look at what their qualities are, what their capability is, where they're fantastic. And I have to accentuate that. I have to utilize all of that because that's where I, what I don't have, right? And so I think, you, you know, being in, intelligent enough to re recognize those uh, individuals for their great qualities and to be a part of um, accentuating those qualities in, in people is, is what lifts us all up and we can just... There, there is no limit to what you can accomplish, in my opinion, if you rely on others. So, Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, and you guys know, as business owners, as, as uh, leaders, managers, you just know it's a huge difference when you work with someone that cares about, first of all, their business, but really cares about the people that work for them. And you can tell. And you can tell it's genuine, right? And, and this is Travis. And so I would even, even this is, we're only up here for 15 or 20 minutes, but I would talk to him after and just, just get information from him, ask him. It's one thing I know uh, him for is he is an open book and he'll tell you, he'll tell you the secrets of the car business, you know, everything that he's learned. And so hopefully we can get a few of those out now. I, what, what amazes me is he gave up a job making a ton of money running all these used car supermarkets 
and he, he jumped into owning his own dealerships. And so it was Southtown Mitsubishi. I got fired. Wha <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Southtown Mitsubishi. <laughs> My attorney said Is there said someone from Larry H. Miller here or something or what? <laughs> so he, it, it, was by, it was by design, I think, is probably a good way to look at it, right? So he, so he goes from there to Axio Automotive. And Axio Automotive, in eight months, you've grown to... Well, eight it locations. started with Mitsubishi, and the company I was working for, Larry H. Miller, and I was very forthright in everything I, you know, we do. I, you, you know, you don't hold any secrets. Um, it, you know, that just doesn't make any sense. So, uh, Ephraim and I picked up a Mitsubishi dealership and and had an opportunity to 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 buy that. Obviously, no one wanted it, so it was a pretty easy purchase for us. And they were selling 40, 42 cars a month. And anyways, we did one hundred and forty four out of it last month. So I'd say we've we've. Uh, and that's been the catalyst, which has opened a million doors for Axio Auto. But we've had that for about two years. And um, I told the Miller Group all about it and everything. And they just, I thought, okay, here, they're going to let me go. You know, I, it's conflict of interest, I would think. And uh, they said, no, you just don't say anything about it and keep doing what you do. So did that for about a year and three months until we finally made the transition. I finally got canned. Well, yeah. So Phil showed all these statistics of, you know, kind of doomsday a little bit, right? And what's happening out there in, in the market and, and uh, the economy. So how do you grow so quickly? That's the one compliment I hear more than anything else is it's pretty incredible to go to eight locations in six or eight months. And so how do you, what strategies go behind that? Well, um, this is a people business. Um, and so strategy looks a million different ways, right? I have a lot of people that just ask me these questions all the time. How'd you get there? What'd you do? All this stuff. And it's interesting because they usually, they just want to talk to you and tell you what they're doing and how you're doing it wrong and all this stuff. And so I just sit and listen to them. But, um, you know, it's really, it's, it's all about the people for me. We had a pretty easy transition knowing I've had all of these, these people that I've worked with for 20 years, you know, 15 to 20 years. And then two of them right here, you know, Ephraim and Mike Gore, are far better than I'll ever be. And, um, and when you can... Um, you know, bring 150 or 200 people together in a pretty short period of time. My job is to fil facilitate an opportunity for them, right? And um, provide the resources, and it's their job to take advantage of it. And uh, we hold each other accountable um, to the goals that we've set. And uh, everybody, you, you know, Max Connect knows all of my goals. You guys know every detail about us and what we're trying to accomplish and where we're going to go. And, um, you know, I, I hold you guys accountable as well for those, and you hold me accountable. And so um, that's what we do as a team. And um, we've been together forever. We know every single detail about each other. And, and uh, so it's pretty easy. And I always tell them, I said, look, you know, Ephraim and I, we were making a couple hundred grand a month at the, the Mitsubishi store. And that's neat and all, right? It's not a money deal. Um, and, and we could have just kind of sailed off right there and enjoyed ourselves for a while. But you have all these people that are um, losing their jobs. Uh, Asbury has is, is, is decided to make a different chain, you know, a, a move, and, and uh, um, I, I wouldn't say that it's bad. They're not a bad company or anything like that. They're, they're fantastic at what they do, but we are a little bit different, and uh, so all of these people were out there looking for um, jobs and opportunity, and so we decided to take a calculated risk. It's, you know, and everybody says the same thing that Ben Gass gets asked is, you know, do you, do you care about risking it all and stuff? I'm like, I grew up with absolutely nothing. I haven't had a cent from a family member since I was 11 and a half years old. I lived in my car when I moved here. Um, yeah, so it's when you when you're at that that level and you you trust yourself. Um, I've I've never been without money. I've always figured it out, and so I, I don't really care. It's 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 about the people, and and uh, we can go as far as any they want to go, and I'll put it all in all the time. It's obviously calculated, right? I'm not gonna now when you look at a bigger risk it's it is a bigger risk because i look at it as i don't want to hurt anybody's uh, families and so i want to be far more calculated with it and who we partner with and who we do business with and stuff but um and then as far as i guess i really am not answering your question but be it staying relevant in the market um it goes you just you utilize the talents that people have and you're extremely talented Right, and, and in, in what Say you do. Say that again, what, what was that? <laughs> uh, if you measure it by like a scale. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You know, it's, it's hard to rip on a guy that's a pretty boy, you know, and owns eight dealerships. You know, what am I going to do? Make fun of him for all the money he has? <laughs> Sucks, you know? <laughs> and I have an incredible wife, too. So. <laughs> that's right. That's anyway, um, so staying relevant is just, it's, uh, I like to be really aggressive. I like to do things a little bit different than what other people do. Um, I love seeing fear. I, I love it when people are scared. I don't care about the economy stuff. It doesn't bother me at all because I think we're in a humongous, like I'm protected by all of you. I, I'm protected by everybody in the country. This is just, a, all it is is just a big pool of, of building blocks and, and they all just work. And you know, you look at the recessions, if you Google them and you go all the way back to the very beginning, you know, what a recession is and how it works. And you know, it's just a, it's just a time period. And to me, the value is time. Like, what do you do with your time? And so you look at all these people that want to go and start businesses and change things, and they're always wanting to get out of what they've just spent the last 20 years perfecting. And so I would value the time I may not be making. So let's say I was making, I don't know, 10 grand a month or whatever at some of those times. Well, I was making a million bucks a year because of the value of education and learning. And, and why would I try to you know, do anything other than what we know how to do and we have the playbook to it. So I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel either. And and so, you know, the recessions last for, you know, three, four months, six months at the longest. You know, we'll bounce right through that. You just make sure you save up your dough, take care of your people and and grow, right? So staying relevant is pretty easy. Awesome. Thank you. We have time for one more question. I don't know if we have time. I'm not looking over at Suzanne just in case. Oh, we do. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> you see the glare you're getting. Enough to do one Dang. crunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we sit in a car driving down to go do radio, and it's just a, just a rip session the whole entire way. Uh, one-sided. I'm always winning, of course. One-sided. I, I just tell them, hey, you keep paying me, you rip on me all you want. That's, that's right. And it just it seems matter. to get more and more and more rips then, because <laughs> I'm paying you a lot more. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, so, okay, so what would you tell a... Let's just say there was kind of a scary thought, but let's just say there's a younger Travis Johnson out there in the audience. And what would you tell a younger Travis about now? Now you're knowing all you know now, and you're uh, let's just say you're 25 years old. What would you tell him? That is just a great question. Um, I'm turning 50 this year, so time is a big deal on my mind. And my son just turned 17, and uh, everybody's so concerned. With everybody else, everybody's so concerned with what winning is. You know, I really don't know what a win is. Uh, we can win races. We can win things. Uh, I've played a lot of sports. Um, my 17-year-old son, you know, he's had a couple walk-offs in this last week. And, you know, he's a very talented baseball player. He started varsity as a, as a freshman and stuff. And, and uh, I was watching him at a couple of his, his games. They beat Jordan, have beat Jordan forever. And everybody's cheering on the field, and he's sitting on the side. And I'm like, dude why don't you get up and cheer with everybody and stuff like that? And he goes, dad, this, it's just a win. Like this isn't, we haven't even done anything. And I thought that was really cool. So I started, you know, I learned from him. You, you learn from everybody you come into contact with. And so, um, Cal, the youngest, tra the younger Travis, I would say, uh, don't waste time. Understand the value of time. Appreciate it. Um, do more with it. Uh, educate yourself. The one thing that I did lack, um, I was just playing, like I just wanted to play ball and have fun and party and goof off with friends in school and stuff and I've been on my own since I was really young um, so there really wasn't, you know, I, I would just, the value of education and, and knowledge and certain academics I, I missed out on and I would love to, you know, I'd say go get as much education as you possibly can. And then I would say value the time and, uh, and copy. Be an incredible copier. Just, I look at everybody sitting here and I listen to everything you say and I'll steal tons of stuff from you. I really will. And um, as people are telling me, you know, they'll ask me about my business and it turns into their whole story. I, I'm just literally just soaking it all in. Um, I've, I've always been the underdog and I love that. And I would say always be the underdog and just be a sponge and then go as hard as you possibly can. Do not, don't rest, um, outwork everybody to death, wear that as a, a badge 
and just look in their eyes and, and just know you're beating them um, because you're just, you're just willing to do everything they won't do. And it's interesting. My brother, sorry, a few more seconds. My brother, right, you think that it would run the family and stuff and, and, and whatnot, but my brother says to me the other day, he works for us at one of our stores. I knew it wasn't going to last long. And, and he says, uh, you know, Trav, this, this, I just don't, this just isn't for me. I, I don't want to do the car business. And I, I'm like, I, I can say verbatim exactly what he's going to say, but I'll let him go through it. And, uh, you know, it's the people that are in it. It's the clientele. It's all these different things. And he says, I'm going to go start my own business. Awesome. What's your plan? What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to hire someone, okay? Um, what are you going to hire them to do? Well, they're going to go wash the windows, and I'm just going to go sell, you know, I'm going to go door to door. And, and my brother's, a, you know, he's, he, he'll be the first one to tell you he's a 140 IQ, super smart guy, really, really neat person. I'm not trying to put him down. Um, but I think it's just, it's interesting how his first thought was, I'm going to hire someone to do the job, then I'm going to take the easy route. And then all he started talking to me about was his time and how golf's important, all these other things are important, and what he's going to have with his time. You know, I, uh, I, you know, you, you kind of see what direction that's going to go, and you see some failure that could potentially happen out of that pretty dang easily, and there's not a lot of forth out there. Um, and so I would just tell the, the Travis, work your ass off. Work as hard as you possibly can. Steal as much information as you can, learn, and then uh, trust yourself a little bit more. Have more faith in, and, and more confidence in yourself. Awesome. Thank you. But um, I think this affects everybody. It seems to be a revolving door right now with employees hiring and quitting, firing, whatever. What advice would you give? Because I know that people love to work for you in the past. There's some that don't, you know, me included. But how, like, what, how do you keep employees? You know, that, how do you keep them happy? What do you do? How do you keep them from leaving? Um, you know, you can follow the trends and you can try to change who you are, I guess, and, and do what you, they, what you think that the, the, the world's telling you that you have to be to, to acquire these employees and hang on to them. I would, to, I, I, again, I'm always going to buck the system. That's just my mindset. Uh, I think a lot of love is really important. I think listening to them is really important. Everybody's got something valid to say. I feel like I'm a psychologist all day long. Um, and, but I care about what they're saying, and I want to help them get through this life because this life was, um, it's been a lot of fun, but it's also extremely difficult. And um, I don't want people to have to go through a lot of stuff that I've had to go through or do. Um, and uh, I, I think you've got to provide an opportunity. I mean, it's, it's people, people really do want to be held accountable. They do want rules. They do want structure, um, even though society and everything is telling you completely different. I totally disagree. If I can sit in front of an individual and I can make out a plan for them on a daily basis and I can show you how to make 700 bucks a day, I can tell you exactly where you're going to be at the end of the month. I know exactly what you're going to do if you're willing to do it. The only difference is, are you willing to do it? Those are the two differences that I notice. And when you are able to help someone provide for their families and uh, grow and take advantage of the opportunities. Um, and then there's, you know, the three month hurdle, the night, you know, there's just so many along the way that you have to deal with, but I think it's just investing in them and their time and, and giving them a path to do it and holding them accountable. I mean, I would rather, you know, wouldn't you rather be yelled at and get it over with now and, and they've learned that lesson instantly than to, you know, have you be nice to me for the next six months and, and give me some BS about it? Like, it's not real. Um, let's get at it right now. Like, like, let's get this over with right now. Let's go hard. And I think people really do appreciate that down deep because they know inside you really are putting all that effort into them. And uh, that's, that's typically how we retain them. And all of my guys are identical uh, to that, and they're just fantastic people. Uh, incredible characters, incredible families, just, just wonderful people. And they all grew up the same way we did. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, we're just about done. Will you sing the Axio Auto jingle, please? Uh, yes, I will. AxioAuto.com. Awesome. Big round of applause, please, for Travis. Thank you.